Hello, I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Rob Vandendam, who is Global Telecommunications Industry Leader at IBM Institute of Business Value. Rob, welcome. Thanks for talking to us. Let's begin like this. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence and IBM. Telcos and service providers are showing a great deal of interest in the potential of AI at the moment. Why is that level of interest increasing and what kind of investments are being made? Yes, Martin, uh, you, you are right. Uh, if we go to clients, the key topic is artificial intelligence. And, and the key reason is that, well, almost all telcos, they have started their uh, digital transformation journey. Uh, but actually, that is only in foundation. So if all those uh, telcos, if they have digitally transformed themselves, what's really the difference? So the digital uh, transformation, actually, that, that is a foundation. But what we believe as IBM, you have to do the digital transformation and add business intelligence to make yourself competitive. So to make sense of, out of all the data, which can be structured data, can be unstructured data with semantics or, uh, or with unknown semantics, and to get that actionable insight that makes you competitive. Thanks for that, Rob. Now, IBM just launched the results of uh, the Global C-Suite Survey. What came out of that in reference to AI? Yes, we just completed uh, our global C-suite survey and uh, we interviewed more than 12,000 uh, C-suite executives from all industries, 700 from the telecom industry. And we also applied our uh, Watson analytics on all the data because there was a lot of data. Uh, we identified uh, three groups uh, in the context of, of, of AI. The first group are the reinventors, and the reinventors actually want to use artificial intelligence everywhere in the enterprise, and they are already investing a lot in that area. We have the tacticians. Actually, they are a little bit more pragmatic. They only want to use AI in specific areas, in, in, in point solutions, and they are investing less than the reinventors. And then we have the aspirationals, and they still have to think about uh, how they are going to invest in AI. Rob, according to the C-suite survey, telco executives see AI's greatest competitive advantage in personalizing the customer experience. Can you elaborate on that? What does it actually mean? Well, that is what you see uh, what the three groups have in common. So uh, the competitive advantages of AI in, uh, the, in the customer experience. So just give an example. Um, no one really enjoys the conversation with a call center representative. It's very difficult to find the right person. It takes too long. You don't always get the, uh, the, the right answer. Um, Self-service channels based on AI can help there. Um, consumers, they, they really want self-service channels uh, because it's more convenient for them. They get the uh, uh, responses, the, the answers uh, more, more quickly. Uh, it provides a better customer experience. It's also better uh, for the telecom company that actually are not uh, really famous for the customer experience. It also reduces uh, call deflection time and it also uh, uh, leads to cost reduction. So um, there it can really help. So you can use AI for a better engagement with the customer which is using natural language. You can um, faster and better analyze all the data that are related uh, to, to the question. Uh, it gives uh, insight in uh, customer issues and, and, and trends to, to the telco, so it gives a, a lot of uh, advantages for, for the telco. So just as an example, uh, Vodafone the UK, they introduced uh, Toby, and Toby actually is a solution based on uh, live person uh, messaging platform and IBM Watson AI capabilities. So that's a kind of virtual agent that really can engage uh, with, with the customers on issues like uh, uh, device troubleshooting, uh, about contracts and all these kind of things. And with this kind of solutions, it can um, understand what customers uh, really, um, what kind of problems customers have more than 90% of the time and give, give the, the right answers that customers uh, really need or appreciate. OK, Rob, now, in addition to AI playing a major role in the front office, do you see other areas within the telcos organisation where AI will have a major impact? Yes, Martin, and here you see the difference between the reinventors and all the groups. The reinventors, they really want to use artificial intelligence everywhere in the enterprise. So uh, also in the middle office, also in the back office. So think about a field worker, for instance, who has to solve problems in, in, in a network outside the office or maybe at the people's home when there are internet connection issues. 
So they can have on their iPad all data available, data that are related to, to the history or to similar problems that uh, were so somewhere else. Uh, they can even suggest, based on artificial intelligence, uh, how the issues should be solved, uh, the, the solution time and all these kind of things. Uh, think about uh, in the network itself, uh, uh, most telcos are working on network fertilization, it's really needed for the increase in traffic, uh, but of course you can only do that if you uh, apply automation which is based on artificial intelligence. Think about uh, the back office where you can use that for, for instance, targeted advertising, but also to re reduce costs in, uh, in the back office. Okay, Rob, moving on slightly, most telcos see the Internet of Things, IoT, as the key revenue generator for the future. Is there also a role for AI there? Yes, you're right. Uh, telcos, they see the IoT as the next key revenue generator. And actually, they are already working in the, in the IoT because they provide connectivity. But with a lot of uh, competition in this area, in the connectivity area, like Sigfox and other connectivity providers, um, the economics become very different for the telcos, so they are searching for, for other areas. One area is where they really expand their machine-to-machine -machine platforms to uh, IoT platforms. So actually uh, to provide a platform for other companies or developers to develop their IoT products or their IoT uh, services. But to uh, make those uh, products and services more intelligent, uh, of course you have to use IoT. So you see a lot of uh, companies uh, expanding in that area. You see also some telcos providing this kind of IoT services and products themselves like uh, Vodafone and, and uh, also AT&T. And you see some operators also having the role of IoT operator, so doing everything end to end. Just to give some, some examples, uh, we, we have uh, well, what I just mentioned, uh, Vodafone and AT&T, but uh, for instance, uh, Taylor2, uh, they developed an IoT uh, toolkit for developers based on uh, Watson um, AI capabilities. So enable developers to uh, produce their, their, their own products and services. For instance, MTN in, in South Africa, they use the IoT platform to uh, trace uh, rhinos uh, in, in, in South Africa. So you see that a lot of telcos are already doing something with AI in the IoT uh, area. Now Rob, we're recording this not very far away from MWC Mobile World Congress 2018 in Barcelona. Obviously, you're going to be there, IBM's going to be there. What are you going to be showing in, in relation to AI at the show in Barcelona? Well, actually, two things. So we have our CDO talking about AI uh, and how AI can help the telco to become more cognitive. So I will advise to listen to those presentations. The second thing is uh, we have our booths with our AI solutions and our showcases uh, from our experiences with, with clients and where you can really learn a lot from. So um, I welcome you to, uh, to our booth.